So next next week we got Alex <laughs> uh, H- Hutchinson, I believe. Hutchinson, yeah. Yeah, he's the creative director of the Google Stadia, and he has some hot takes about streamers. Uh, since Twitch was doing a lot of, like MCA uh, DMCA uh, bans on on mu- well not bans but strikes on music, um, mm-hmm. and this guy basically saying, hey, don't worry about that. Like, hey, you should you should be like you should pay the de- developers and publishers. To even like play the game you're playing because that's their content and it's not your content you're just leeching off them basically mm-hmm. um and i think that's dumb <laughs> i mean a lot of people think it's dumb <laughs> but i mean there's some points like you know cer- certain games do get hurt by streamers like like detroit become human like i saw that whole game on twitch i'm like i wouldn't buy it <laughs> i've already seen the whole <laughs> thing right i, I mean yeah. i know there's a lot of branching pathways and and stuff but it doesn't like you know i've already seen the main story like, i don't really care yeah uh, but i feel like for most games it did just get benefited from twitch i mean look at things like among us right or fall guys or F- phasmophobia like i feel like those games wouldn't have gone as big well tw- actually wouldn't have been as big without twitch yeah. like those games that that platform made those games to what they are now and they, they've been selling like crazy um so i feel like this hot take is really stupid to make this year just from those three <laughs> examples alone um, I, I mean, I get what he's trying to say, but I feel like from even for most like story games, so it's not like God of War, right? Like, the gameplay is still good in that game. Uh, obviously, you might know what happens in the story if you watch a streamer play it, but I still think the game is worth playing just for the gameplay part. You know, you can't really experience that by watching a streamer. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. I don't know. What, what's your take on this? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this is a pretty hot take this guy got here. Yeah. Um, But... Yeah, I mean, I think it's just dumb. I I mean, just going back to the whole DMCA with Twitch and music, yeah. like, uh, I think that, you know, as a YouTuber that's been doing this shit for a long, long time, it's like, all right, playing music on anything, mm-hmm. it's kind of risky. Yeah. Um, and now Twitch, you know, they're now sort of locking down on that, uh, sort of like giving people strikes. And yeah, it's... It is kind of risky to play music now because people, some people could clip it and then it'll just cause a strike. Anyways, um, my opinion on just like DMCA with music is like, all right, like they have the right to do it, but like, is it like a smart move? Not necessarily in my opinion, just because like I've watched a lot of streams where like I discover like music through them. So like, yeah. for example, uh, more recently I was watching Myth. And, like, he watches the uh, TSM Valorant players, like, play. And then when they win, he puts on, like, you know, some, like, pretty good, like, trap music. And I'm like, hey, what's this song? He has it open on his Spotify. I let me go and look this up, add it onto my thing, and then I'll listen to it. Another example is with Aphromoose. Uh, There was one time he was playing a Juice World song that I'd never heard of. Oh, okay. And then suddenly that Juice World song was on my on-repeat playlist because I was playing it so much. So there's obviously benefits there, but like the instant sort of like, oh, this guy has like 20K people watching and they're not going to see any of those streams on like Spotify or Apple Music or whatever application they're using, you know? So, you know, the record companies obviously have that sort of right to be like, hey, we're going to like, you know, strike you because you're playing our music. And like, you know, these streamers on Twitter being like, hey, yeah, can we like play your music on stream? I'm like, that's not going to work entirely because like the record company obviously has like the final say. Yeah. Uh, but I think most independent artists are, are going to be like, yeah, you know, you could just like stream my music, whatever. Um, but going back to this guy's hot take, once again, going back to where we were to begin with, uh, this guy's just dumb. I don't even know what the hell he's talking about. Uh, I understand that like, oh, you know, you bought their game and now you're like streaming it to other people. Obviously, that's going to hurt games like Telltale or Detroit Become Human where like the game is like mainly narrative. Uh, But for most other games, like they benefit from it. Like 100%, like you said, Among Us, like that game would not be as big as it is today. When I was at work today, there was a kid wearing a Among Us costume, and I was like, okay, like, yeah, quick. this game this game blew up, like, 100%. So, yeah, and, like, Among Us, uh, Fall Guys, and a bunch of other games over the past couple of years alone, like, they wouldn't be as big as they are today. Um, and, yeah, I think that streaming only benefits them, mostly. Even for games like Detroit, 
or like uh telltale games like if people are interested to like play the game themselves they'll buy the game like people like when you watch let's players if there are any like when you watch chugga conroy's videos it's also just because like people like lose interest in watching the videos but also people will be like hey yo like he's playing like xenoblade this game looks kind of dope all right now now i'm gonna buy it people playing games whether it be live or vod it always benefits the game company in some way because you're going to be interested in that sort of piece of media at the end of the day so like you know despite you not playing detroit you might buy a detroit become human shirt or like you might be interested in the next game that they're going to make or whatever like just having more reach to other people especially because streaming is becoming a much more popular thing there's like no downside. Yeah. Licensing a game out so you can stream it? Like what is this? Like that just sounds that just sounds pretty greedy and I think no one's ever going to do that and think that yeah, like people are are actually going to buy this. Like unless you already have that sort of audience, but people are 100% going to backlash and be like, "Yo, like this is this is dumb. Like this is a greedy move." You know? So, but that's enough of my rant. Is there anything else you'd like to add as I'm sort of collecting my thoughts here? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Th- just the thing with Chugga, um, cause when he first let's play Xenoblade One, that was back in like mm-hmm. what, like 2014 or 13. That's what really got me into JRPGs and just Xenoblade in general. And that's like one of my favorite JRPGs now. Um, and I wouldn't have bought that game like three times <laughs> if it wasn't for <laughs> Chugga Conroy. And now I love the series. Same thing with Persona. Like the first time I've ever saw a Persona anything was Persona Four from a different let's player. And mm-hmm. that's what made me super into Persona, and I just got all the games from there. So you make a very good point. Just because I'm watching someone play like a JRPG, which is mostly focused on story, and you know, you think like I wouldn't even buy it because I already know what's happening. No, I mm-hmm. made me buy the games like multiple times. Like I have Xenoblade three three times, <laughs> or mm-hmm. Xenoblade one uh, three times. So, uh, yeah, I, I think like you said, just exposure to like a franchise or just that game in general will make people buy it usually. So, um, yeah, th- this guy's just garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I mean like, you know, maybe you should worry about Google Stadia before you could, you know, make yeah. these hot <laughs> takes. Like if every if everyone was using Google Stadia, that that would be a different story, but no one's using it because you're charging full price to stream games, which is, you know, not what people want at all. So, um but yeah, like there's a bunch of other examples with like games. For me personally, like uh Ant Dude uh, when he had like his old channel, which Sonic was Sonic Dude, Dude yeah. 101, oh, yeah. yeah, I remember. Um, what's it called? When he was playing Pac-Man World too, I was like, wait, there's a Pac-Man platformer, and the game looked fun, and I was like, all right, now I'm gonna go to Plane Trade and buy it. I mean, like obviously, like it's a used game, obviously, and the game's kind of old. But yeah. if he were to play a newer game, I obviously that same effect would you know have on me. So yeah, just like streaming and like playing games for like sort of to make content for it for free has always been the way for like however many years now and to sort of like license that is kind of just like dumb yeah it's really dumb i I, it's a really dumb take (laughs) the more i think about it the more dumb it is (laughs) yeah like i understand where he's coming from from like a business perspective but like the way it's been for so long you trying to fix that by adding a paywall for streamers to do nah like that is not gonna work at all so there's that. <laughs> uh-